Hello, it's Sarah from Hardcover Hearts, and I'm here with my week of reading. Had another really good week. I have actually more in progress right now than I've had in a really long time. Uh, I should be nervous probably, but I, I'm feeling pretty good about it. So I think, I think it'll all work itself out. Uh, I completed three books last week, which was, which was great. Um, and we'll be completing a few today. So I think I'm going to be able to start the weekend in a really great place. Let's jump right in. Um, it's reading women month. And so really happy to I'll highlight all the, the books that I'm reading for reading, reading women month as we go through. Uh, the first one, uh, La Bella Lingua, My Love Affair with Italian, The World's Most Enchanting Language by Diane Hales. So I've spoken about this a few times. Um, as I have been reading it, the first section is very heavy on the, the nuances and idiosyncras idiosyncrasies of Italian, which I think is, is very, very interesting. And the way she talks about it is, is compelling. And it reminded me very much of Dreyer's English, which I enjoyed, which is a recent release this year, uh, where the uh, chief copy editor of Random House wrote a book about copy editing. And it's one of the more engaging reference books I've ever read in my life. Uh, this had a lot of those similar feels, except it also added elements of, lang of art and food and culture, uh, which I found uh, much more well-rounding and gave you a much, much more context. So I, I really enjoyed this. I, I thought it was a very well-crafted story. So I, I gave it uh, four stars. So I, I would highly recommend if you're interested in Italian and if you're interested in the culture, it's a great book. Next up, uh, shout out to Mel at Mel's Bookland Adventure. She recommended uh, the Hawthorne series by Anthony Horowitz. And and I, I admit that I, I gave pause to this because when I read the first one, it was only because I absolutely adored the magpie murders that he had done, which was a murder inside. And there were multiple, um, it was like a uh, one of those Russian nesting dolls of a murder, uh, of a murder book. And I just thought it was so compelling and uh, clever and I really enjoyed reading it. It had a book that was being published and, and secrets and, and it just, it felt like, um, like a, a masterpiece mystery come to life on a page. And so I just, and I loved, loved the hell out of that book. So I turned to his first Hawthorne book, The Word is Murder. And I, could not figure out what the hell was going on. Uh, first of all, Anthony Horowitz put himself as a character. So as a person who's a writer, and he kind of talks about his past and the books that he's written and, and what he's currently doing. And the setup is that he meets this, this investigator, used to be a, a, a cop in London, who wants him to write a book about him and then pulls him into a murder mystery investigation. And I just, I, I, I will admit, uh, I gave so much side eye to that setup and I just felt like it was a little lazy and I couldn't figure out why this, why he would do something like this. So I really disliked it, but you know, booktube is just the place that just gives you all the gems. So I really admire uh, Mel's choices in books and I really like what she reads. So I decided to give it another shot and going in this time, understanding the setup, understanding how it was, how he was presenting uh, the work. I recognized a lot of tongue in cheek and I recognized a lot of uh, just general cheekiness in, in the setup and how it was done. And I was able to kind of go with it a little bit better. Um, and he, he, uh, he took a lot of, a lot of hits himself, you know, he puts himself up for a lot of ridicule, which uh, now I see as, as a little bit more enjoyable than, than, um, than I did the first time. So I really enjoyed this, the sentence of death, shockingly. Uh, so thank you, Mel, for, for suggesting it. 
And then uh, from one of my mood readings from last from last week that I put up that I'm from a section I do called mood reading roulette, which are, these are kind of things that I'm feeling compelled, drawn to, may make kind of a light TBR, tentative TBR. Um, I ended up picking uh, One Good Turn from Kate Atkinson. So I'm trying to read the Jackson Brody series before the, I think it's The Big Sky comes out, which is I think her fifth or sixth in that series. And so Kate Atkinson is, is obviously a really talented writer. Um, I, I really have enjoyed uh, how she progresses. I progresses and how she has evolved as a, as a writer. Um, she's complex. Um, she doesn't write straightforward narrative. There's always layers and extra and timelines. She plays a lot with timelines and perspectives. Um, and so I tried this one and, and it, it was so funny is I had such a strong visual, uh, identification as I was reading it. And it was only after I finished it that I remembered that there was a series, I think it was a BBC series, uh, that I saw, or I saw it on BBC America or Acorn that was basically, uh, a take on this. So that's why I had such a vis strong visual association with this, but it still didn't, didn't lessen my enjoyment of the book. The book is really great. So I would highly recommend it. That was one good turn. That was the second in the Jackson Brody series. So let's talk about what I have currently in going in play. Oh, so I'm uh, making a fantastic progress on the Quincunx. This is a buddy read that I'm doing. And uh, because I, I've already talked with her about the first section of the book, I could talk with you all about it. This is set up into parts. There's four parts in this book. Uh, and so far, it is a labyrinth of characters and symbols and uh, environment. Uh, there is so much going on here. You feel like you're in a puzzle. Uh, you feel like you're you're in something that's that's really going to pay off. Uh, this is a. I think it was written in the eighties. It was released released in the eighties, nineteen eighties. It. I. I don't always know what's going on, but I trust this author because of the depth which she's writing and the quality of the writing. It's so atmospheric and so beautiful and so interesting. And there's all these foreshadowing moments. And then you're like, hmm, are they throwing me off? Is this really, it's, it is engaging every one of my synapses. I'm, I'm in it. I, I am absolutely in it. So thrilled to be buddy reading this. Then another buddy reading that I've started, can't say anything about because won't be discussing it until uh, later next week is The Leopard. So really excited by this one. This is um, Giuseppe di Lampedusa and uh, uh, reading reading this at a pretty and much faster clip than I expected, which is lovely and uh, enjoying the experience, but won't say any more so that I have the opportunity to talk with her about it. Uh, and then I'm continuing in a very, very, very snail slow pace with uh, Audrey and Rich's essential essay. So gonna, this is going to be on, on here a while. Uh, and I'll talk, uh, I should probably try to at least read at least an essay so I can at least talk about each of them each week. So that maybe that'll be something that I do moving forward. And then I am reading something that I also picked out from my mood reading and uh, for reading women as well and uh, the reading women month as well and that is um, the binding by Bridget Collins and I'm here to tell you I am in it I'm in it really excited by this I'm about 52 percent in listening to the audio which is fantastic uh, this was also a digital sale so I, I actually have the the audio, the digital copy uh, that I can refer back to. Uh, really enjoying it. It's, it's. I think I, I mentioned before. It, there's elements of witchcraft. There's books and cre creating books and binding and the idea of memory. Really beautifully written. Uh, very interestingly crafted. I'm enjoying the characters, enjoying the setting. So that's uh, expect to hear more about that one. I'm also. I also am starting Walking, and this is by Erling Kaye. Uh, this is Walking One Step at a Time. 
Um, this author also wrote Silence. So I, I was in the mood for a calmer read, something that was a little more tranquil because I've been feeling like everything's speeding up right now. Uh, and so I grabbed this, I started reading this as a book form, and then I realized that I actually it made compelled me to want to walk. And so I switched to the audio version when I saw it in my in my local public library. And I've been walking and listening to it. And it's a wonderful meditation on walking. Now, I would have been very uh, irritated if this didn't also talk about disability. Uh, because I think it's really a sad thing to bestow the virtues of um, an able-bodied experience without also discussing uh, the people who are unable to walk and the and that experience. So I'm very happy to say I just reached that part of the narrative where he talks a little bit about that. But he pulls a lot of different um, aspects in and talks about about them. So I'm enjoying this. It's a nice meditation on walking. And, and what was interesting, he just talked about how if he didn't, if he wasn't able to walk, he would probably engage in another type of of ex of experience and he mentioned uh if he if he was um if he was a buddhist he would do zazen but i think he all i think he neglected that there is a very strong tradition of meditative walking in buddhism and in zen so he could he could do both someone should tell them that so uh, let's see. And then I'm so excited that my Slightly Foxed subscription for summer came. Now, Slightly Foxed is just uh, so lovely. When we talk about, when I talk about quiet and, and calmer and slower, these are the kinds of things that I, that I mean. This is Backlist. Um, these women do a publishing, uh, a publishing company and they look specifically for backlists of, of books that maybe haven't, that are deeply loved, but have been overlooked and so this is a quarterly that they do um and it also comes with a with a book i just I, and their podcast is so divine i just i love it so much it's very calming and soothing so i'm excited to take a little bit of this and read a little bit of this as i'm going along um and then uh from a mood reading perspective there are a couple of things that are exciting to me right now uh, there was a digital sale, some really great digital sales that just came up. They may still be available in the United States. I'm not sure about Europe, uh, but A Far Cry from Kensington, Muriel Sparks's book is, was available. So I grabbed that. I've only read, I think I've only read uh, The Prime of Miss Brody and Memento Mori, uh, which I thought both were fantastic. Memento Mori had me cackling. I, I just, I was dying laughing. I, I guess it's kind of cruel to laugh about old people who are getting a prank call telling them that uh, that they're gonna die. But it was, it was written so cheekily. I just, I thought it was so funny. So I'm looking forward to reading that one. I don't I have no idea where it sits upon her list of, amazing, of, of books and, and all of that. Um, then I also am interested in, in, maybe trying to grab this one, the how to do nothing, resisting the attention economy. And this is by Jenny O'Dell. Um, interested in reading this and she's doing a reading, either she just did it and I missed it or it's coming up next week, but really excited. I might try to see if I can go see that. Uh, and then uh, Ocean Vong just released uh, On Earth We Are Briefly Gorgeous. So I might go grab that. Uh, and specifically because he is doing a reading and appearance with Rebecca Solnit, who, who I adore. And that'll be next week. Uh, and that'll be, uh, uh, so I think I'd like, I, I would like to have read a little bit into that before going to hear him speak, because I think it might make the experience that much richer. Uh, and then lastly, uh, I have a book that was just on an ebook sale at the same exact time that a very, very good friend, um, Trey recommended it to me and it's the book of delights. It's essays by Ross Gay. And he uh, texted me and said, I think I found a Sarah book. This is a really good. And he just said, it's, it's, um, 
there's just a lot of joy and uh, about noticing beauty. Uh, so I, I thought that that sounded fantastic. So I might, I might start that. I grabbed it on the digital discount. Uh, so at least I have the copy. Uh, he recommends, though, he said that the audio is fantastic. So that was my week. I do really love Friday reads and wrap ups and and the way the community seems to uh, all collect on the weekends to see what everyone has read and, and is reading. And, and it's just so, so lovely. So um, I wanted to send a shout out to the uh, BookTube community for being such a lovely place. And I know there's been a lot of controversy as of late regarding um, sexism, regarding misogyny, uh, regarding some inappropriate behavior and just flat out uh, inappropriate, I think is a light word, um, flat out despicable and, and unconscionable behavior of some of uh, some male booktubers regarding some of their, their viewers and other booktubers uh, that are women. And I want to send a shout out to all of those men who are decrying it, all of those men who are standing up with us and demanding that behave, that kind of behavior stop calling out for what it is and rallying behind uh, your sisters. Uh, so thank you. Um, we can't fight this alone. This is bigger than, than us and fr quite frankly, we shouldn't have to. So I am so heartened uh, by the community rallying, uh, by the men that I hear speaking out, because uh, I feel like women have been speaking out for a long time. So hearing your deeper tom timbered voices uh, in this mix has been uh, a wonderful uh, and heartening experience and helps me continue the fight. So thank you. Uh, thank you. You know who you are because I've commented on each and every one of your, your tweets and your videos. Um, and I'd like to encourage more of you um, to help us and speak out and become a more vocal ally because we, we need all the support we can get, especially in Trump's America and many other places in the world where women's rights are seeming to recede into the background as if they were never there. So, well, that was a pretty somber note to end. I don't want to end on that note. Um, let me end on the note that it's, a it's going to be a beautiful weekend. We're finally having nice weather in Northern California. And even though I'm in a long sleeve shirt, uh, I don't have a sweater on because uh, we're starting to warm up. So that's fantastic. So I hope I've been very jealous of every everyone with their backyard videos and uh, videos of, of poolside and all of that. So thank you so much. I hope you have a fantastic weekend and I'll look forward to talking to you all soon. Bye.